does it sound like anyone can hear anything that I'm saying? Okay. If you can hear me, let me know. Because here we are, and I will, you know, give it a minute or two here to see how you guys... are all handling it. Okay. Let's see here. Nobody. Okay. Actually, let me see if this is working on YouTube. And if it is, then that's a plus. Let's see. Let's see how this is working now. My day is going. Let's see. Anything? If it is, then perfect. We are golden. If anybody wants to come and hang out now, you can. So, anyway, folks, um, what's been going on um, the last uh, however fucking long it's been, um, I've been trying to uh, get my audio to work. Yay, it's working. Okay, for fuck's sake. Um, and for those of you who have been sitting by waiting, um, you have tried uh, to do this roughly, I guess, five times now. So for those of you who were hanging out and texting me and messaging me on Facebook telling me that it's not fucking working and shit's all fucked up, thank you so much, because I would have talked for a good 17 fucking hours. If you could, um, uh, anybody, because um, I, I don't want to keep going back to uh, do little messagey comment things. So if any one of you want to um, tag me in a post saying that um, Take 5 is the one that's working or put a link on it, that would be immensely helpful. So <clears throat> what I was trying to say before, on the Google Plus event page, there is a Q&A section. And on that section, um, it'll be a little easier to answer questions just because those questions come up a lot quicker. So um, for those of you who are doing that, that would be the way to go. Um, also, if you do want to check it out on um, YouTube, I will periodically check back there to see if there's any questions going on on that um, um, hang on, I have someone right now. So it's working fine now, just find uh, take five. And there we go. <laughs> this is such a train wreck. Well, I mean, honestly, if you could think of a better way for a Creeperson production to go, I'd like to hear it. So um, that is how this is working. And before, I said, hey, look at my new picture I have hanging up, that Frankenstein picture. I bought that like five years ago, and it's been sitting in a wrapping forever. So um, now that's how that is. So uh, let's see here. What was I going to say? <clears throat> oh, just to get this thing kind of started beforehand, if you guys have any questions about making films or any just general questions or even how my day is going or whatever, um, if you want to ask that before we start, we'll start the movie here in a couple minutes, um, just to kind of get those <clears throat> out of the way. Woohoo, Carrie, we can hear! Yay! So things are good now. I'm not 
uh, psycho. So now I'm on a super ass old laptop that's working perfectly fine, but my nice MacBook Pro is now taking a shit, which I do not understand. So, um, and it's funny because I'm going to be recording another podcast as soon as I'm done with this one on that one, and I bet you it works. So it's just a hardware issue. So anyway, uh, Creep Creeper since Frankenstein, that's me. This movie uh, was shot, I believe, on Thanksgiving weekend in 2006. It took uh, two and a half days to shoot. And um, the reason why I did it, and this is an old story, and a lot of you who are fans of mine or who have been following me, Probably know this story, but I'll try to give a little more detail this time. Um, back in the day, uh, around 2005, 2006, I had a record label called Creepsville Entertainment. And we had about six bands at the time, and um, I Creepsville Entertainment was the label, but we had a separate distributor who put our stuff out, kind of like how um, MVD was the distributor for the Creeperson Film Studio um, for these movies. Um, and uh, during the time of our stay with this said distributor, they absorbed or acquired a film distribution company. And what their idea was, was they wanted to make films that starred um, some of the guys from the bands that they had signed and put music from the bands that were on the labels on in the films just for a lot of cross-promotion kind of stuff. And since I had done some music videos and short films um, and they knew I had gone up to Oregon to make Bloodless Romance and it didn't end up happening, they hit me up and asked me if I could make a film. And in the little documentary, I talk a little bit about this. And um, I think it kind of came off a little wrong, but um, what they basically said was make something that is something everyone would know by the name, like make like a vampire movie or something. And um, I, I don't remember exactly who said it, but it came up to, uh, like, a Frankenstein movie. Would that be something that is name recognition enough to do something like that? And that's how it happened. So I wrote it um, in a couple days, and pretty much everyone in the movie was just friends of ours, <clears throat> um, with kind of the exception of James Porter, who's the star of this, and he actually came out and um, auditioned to play Blackie in Bloodless Romance. And uh, we ended up not doing Bloodless Romance like that, so um, I had him come back, and it was almost a, a year later, probably about ten months later, um, that he came back and did this, and I think he did an amazing job. As far as uh, band members go, the only like, band member guy who had an actual part in the movie was um, this guy named Josh Berry, who was the lead singer of this band on our label called Somewhat Envious. And um, he originally had a little bit of a bigger part, but then there was some personal stuff that went down while we were shooting. And so his part kind <clears> of <throat> uh, squeezed down a little bit. If you have seen this movie before... Um, there is a bonfire party scene, and pretty much everyone who's in that scene, um, for the most part, were members of various bands um, that were on my label at the time. Uh, and we all this was shot in on the outskirts, like right on the edge of Eugene, Oregon, um, at on the property of Nicole Nemeth, who plays. No, not Mary. Shelly. She plays Shelly. Um, and it's just beautiful. Everything we got, we got right there. It just This is one of those instances where 
you luck out having a location that has absolutely everything you need. And um, for indie filmmaking or filmmaking on a shoestring budget, that is probably one of the most important things in the world. Now, um, if you don't have this film, um, you can go on... Um, and because I'm using a computer I never use anymore, it's like all these pop-ups are going, would you like to update this? Would you like to update that? Um, if you go on Amazon, um, you can. if you're an Amazon Prime customer or whatnot, you can get um, this for free on there. Um, or you could buy it for a dollar or rent it for $1.99. So if that's something you want to do, you have about a minute before we start this bad fucker up. Um... But with that said, is there any questions that anybody has before I get crack a lack in here? Let me see here. Just making sure everything is working properly. Ah, fuck it. It'll work as good as it works. And hopefully everyone will come fucking party. So, I don't know, Shar, if you heard me ask, but if you could, or Carrie, post a little thing with a link, that would be amazing. And tag me in it so people who I'm friends with that you might not be friends with will see that it's actually working. That would be super. So I am going to go ahead and hit play in... I'll do a countdown, and it still isn't going to be exact, but I'll do it anyway for shits and giggles. So in three, two, one, play. And it has that cool little shit. Um, Gary Griffith, uh, who's done a lot of posts work for me, did that, that title thing. And Overture, now if you see it has a black bar across it, um, the reason why that is is because the original editor... Um, misspelled overture and it was sitting on top of the picture right there and it was gorgeous um, but that was like our little Hitchcock thing and uh, so when I went to go redo the movie the original cut of the movie did not have or not the original cut but what I had of the movie I didn't have the original footage so we had to overlay that on top of it now, if you notice how just amazing the leaves and the grass and everything look, this was shot on a Canon XL2, which was like kind of a shitty little um, DV cam. It was kind of state of the art back in like 2005, but th the color in this is just amazing. I've always liked that, like all the outdoor shit here. Um, and again, you'll see, since this is right after Halloween, Nicole still had some of her Halloween stuff up, but just, I mean, the other thing too, the, like the fog, the atmosphere, the weather, every single thing we did played into this. Like later, it's going to be raining and shit, and, um, that worked out just fucking perfect, and that rock looks like it has a face on it. So that kind of scared the shit out of me, so I liked having that on there. Um, let me see here. Uh, if you notice these little things, that little pineapple bit right there, that is from a uh, Tales of Tomorrow episode um, that you see a little bit more of. It's actually Einstein that had uh, Lon Chaney playing the monster. And the clips in this, you have everything. This is Cabinet Dr. Caligari. Before that, you had Phantom of the Opera. Um, I know that we used, um, uh, that's from White Zombie, we used uh, Nosferatu, we used um, Carnival of Souls, um, there might have been another one that I'm not 100% on, I'll, I'll let you know if I can remember it, as I see it actually. Um, those horses were across the street. And if you saw the Meet Me Out in the Sticks video, that was the first kind of thing I did, and we did that out in Oregon too. 
um, and we almost got attacked by cattle. So um, there's all sorts of animals and shit all over the place in these little situations. And that's Nicole. That's whose house we were at. Um, just having her smoke and coffee on the porch. Um, in fact, I think she was really just having her cigarette and coffee, and we just started filming her. So I don't know. Um, A.L. Smith and Cordell Stetson. If I didn't meet Cordell, I don't know if this movie or any of the shorts or videos I did in Oregon, I would have ended up doing. Because the only reason why we were able to get all this stuff in the first place was because A.L. Smith, whose name is Aaron, sorry for outing you there, buddy. I'm just not going to call you A.L. the whole time I'm doing this. Um, he was a film student at the University of Oregon there in Eugene, and um, he kept getting student loans. That is horrifying. Those people on the bus, that's always freaking me out in Carnival of Souls. Anyway, um, he uh, had all these, he was getting all these student loans, and what he was getting with the money from his student loans was equipment to kind of fund his own studio kind of thing. So um, that's how that works. And for some reason there's a bunch of noise coming from some other place in my house. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Um, so I'm going to step away for two seconds and try to figure this out. So excuse me momentarily, folks. Thank you. Okay, that is just horrifying stuff. I don't know where any of those noises were coming from. Um, but anyway, so here we are. Now, um, this Tales from Tomorrow thing here, um, this just is so cool. I really, really like it. All of these things... Um, I got from like bins at the 99 cent store. We were just like um, little uh, DVDs for a dollar kind of thing. Now all of these shots, um, a lot of people think this is kind of boring, but for me it was just to show how kind of mundane he was. And so a lot of these static shots with him just doing the stuff he would do every day in his routine um, just made a hell of a lot of sense to me. And everything that was set up in here was set up exactly the way it was. That's at Nicole's house. She has a little guest room up in the attic um, that I think her son, that was her son's bedroom or something like that. So... Um, that just kind of worked out. This scene actually, believe it or not, the toothbrushing scene here was actually a lot longer than um, it was originally. And um, I had a few different people kind of talk me into making it shorter. Now this right here, him backing up and then doing his little spin around um, even though it works without getting his eggs in the table, that was my little homage to the first time you see the monster in um, Frankenstein. And I mean, if you don't look at porn magazines when you're eating eggs, I don't know what the hell's wrong with you. Nicole! You're here! Hi, Nicole. Everyone say hi to Nicole. Um, but yeah, those eggs were cooked. Um, and they sat there all weekend. And so every time we needed to shoot eggs, because for the most part we shot this pretty um, continuous, he kept eating the same eggs and he was fine with it. Super trooper, dude. Um, and then that rat right there, the rat known as Frankenstein, um... I think Nicole actually went out and got him the morning of the shoot. 
and I ended up keeping him. Um, he was like the family pet for about three years, and then he died. And it was really sad because he kind of buried himself um, under his bedding when he knew he was going to die. It was really sad. But um, that bag of food I had for a while, he was such a good little rat, dude. Super cool. In fact, if you watch uh, Decomposing Jack in Jack's room, um, that cage is sitting um, in the corner of the room behind the desk. And he was in it, so he only came out a little bit during that period. But... Um, Oh, he's so good. This came out really, really well. Now, this gorgeous shot of outside, it just it looked so amazing. And that's Oregon in November, man. It's just so beautiful. Um, a lot of these scenes, I don't think originally we're supposed to take place outside, but um, we put them in, and then we have a jump scare coming up here that I don't know if it really works with the car coming by. Um, it seemed to work when we did the first screening. Um, and like that whole thing with Overture, at the first screening we ever did of this, um, it was right when we came back to um, Southern California from Oregon, put the movie on, and the room's full of people, as soon as Overture comes up, because it was the original Overture, <clears throat> someone's like, Overture spelled wrong! And I just about died. It was, like, the worst. Um, that phone right there is, um, <clears throat> it was a party favor at a party for The Incredibles when The Incredibles came out. <clears throat> and every table had their own Incredibles phone to take. So we put um, some duct tape on parts of it so you couldn't see the logos and stuff. Um, now this whole bit with like the backward stuff, obviously, and I've said it a million times, um, I have always been a huge David Lynch fan and um, just the sound of things backwards are they they set me on edge a little bit so that was really fun to do that and then the whole idea with Victor being so um, kind of uh, in his own little world where he only talks to his rat and his TV and stuff like that. Um, I wanted to do something where, kind of like on Ch in Charlie Brown, when um, like the kids in Charlie Brown hear the adults talk, it's like a wah, 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 wah. So um, that's why we did that. And look at how little Frankie is right there, dude. He was that little for about two seconds. And this is the only dolly shot. And, and honestly, this movie was lit with, like, two of those, like, Home Depot um, silver bowl lights. So um, it's kind of neat that we got the looks that we did get out of this with just those lights. So, um, so that worked out really, really, really good. Yay. And if you guys are asking questions, um, I guess you could vote questions up and down. Um, so I'll just keep kind of checking in and out here every once in a while to make sure that's all going the way it's supposed to be going. Look at how freaking cute Frankie is, dude. Oh, and we have some comments over here. Um, okay, so let me see if I could pull those up on here. Now, this was great because we were trying to do this thing, and um, if you heard, like, some snapping, it's because this dog kind of wandered um, up to us while we were shooting. 
and here it is wandering up right now. Um, and the whole time I was like, oh my god, this dog. And I, we didn't want to ruin the shot by yelling at James, saying, just go with it. But he was a trooper, and then right there the dog just stares at him. And I'm like, oh shit, dude, the dog's going to start freaking out and barking at him and shit. But it, it ended up working out okay. The dog just made him all kind of uncomfortable and weird. So um, that worked out really, really good. So that was really cool. Let me see if I could yank this in here real quick. And this is one of my favorite movies ever. Um, Cabinet of Dr. Caligari. Uh, it's a very... Uh, it's so dreamlike and nightmare-y. Um, the sets are all painted. There wasn't really any lights used other than an, a big overhead light to kind of light it up. Um, it's just always blown my mind that in 1919 something that amazing was put together and made. It's just a really good movie. Okay, let me see here. <clears throat> okay, GP, if you're still there, dude, um, I hope your internet's going good. And Deborah, if you can't view it on YouTube, try it on the Google Plus page because that seems to be working. Okay. Now, I wanted to do a lot of um, shots that alluded to where um, Victor identified with the people in the movie. And if you saw that little shot of Grey's Anatomy, um, the PVC pipe that we used for the dolly was right there. And that... Um, shot of the porno magazine is quite filthy even though there's um, little bars there. Um, I still have that lamp all these years later. Um, the guy who he's talking to on the phone right now is actually A.L. Smith. Um, when we were editing this we forgot that we hadn't shot any of the phone call stuff. And so um, I think all three of us did a voice, and we liked Aaron's the best. And this is from the Colgate Comedy Hour with Abbott Costello dancing with the Frankenstein monster. Amazing stuff, dude. Amazing stuff. Um, and then with this right here, um, Nikki was actually kind of pissed off. She was doing something, or I don't know, maybe she wasn't. But she was at the house, and we were at the um, editing studio thing. And I called her up. I'm like, hey, I need you to do this part. And she's like, what are you talking about? I'm like, I need you to just say these lines and, you know, whatever. And we got into, like, this <laughs> full-blown little argument um, while she decided if she was going to do it or not. And then I just put the phone out, and um, Aaron uh, just recorded it as it went. I'm trying to think... That's it right here, the hey, they're sexy. I can't remember what the second call was. But um, either way, good stuff. Um, this scene is actually lit with that little desk lamp. I don't, honestly, like for a DV cam, the XL2 is really fucking nice, dude. This looks really good. Um, but he did such a good job with kind of being a freak. I did get a little bit of heat after this came out with um, people asking if I was trying to make fun of mentally retarded people. And that wasn't at all what this was. So hopefully... Nobody else felt that way because I didn't feel that way. I just wanted him to be really kind of slow. And when I had rats, I used to take them with me everywhere. I would put them in my pockets, in my hoodie, and put them in my hood. Um, 
so there was a couple people who asked, like, why the heck? And, yeah, that was a rat penis right there. Sorry, you guys. Um, but I used to always carry my rats around like that. Now, originally right here, like, the transmission that I play, my voice there or whatever, originally what we were going to do was have, like, a silhouette of me and instead of having me there have stat, like, TV static. Um, so it was just, like, this body that this voice came out of or whatever. Um, and we did the green screen stuff, but for some reason, the green screen just wasn't working. Like, we couldn't keep everything out of the picture. So then we we tried having just a couple different people, because it was like, maybe I'm too round, you know? So we had, and those, the bird noises, those are legit. That was like geese flying overhead or something. Um, but so we tried a couple different things and a couple different people to try to make that work. And, and watching cuts of the movie over and over again and seeing it with just the voice and the kind of blue light kind of shimmering, I ended up actually really liking that. And then once we got the green screen thing to work with the actual silhouette of the person with the static, I hated it. Um, it was just like I would rather not have used it. So... Um, we ditched that and went back with the original um, thing. And now if you notice a difference here, behind that curtain is, I believe, a washer and dryer. Um, so that's why we had that covered. Um, but the curtain's a little farther back, and the light's a little bit lower now. So if you remember the first one, there was kind of like this shine coming out of the bottom there. Um, that's the same plate of eggs, and this is right after we shot that other egg scene. We just turned the camera, and there was a shadow coming up right there, and it's still there. I wonder what that was. More likely than not, it was probably my fucking elbow or something holding a light. Huh. Shocking. Um... But yeah, these scenes are kind of great. The, the focus is a little soft on some of it. That looks amazing. Out the window. That's like, if you guys haven't seen it yet, um, there's a BBC movie um, called uh, The Woman in Black that I guess that Harry Potter movie, Woman in Black or whatever, was based off of. <sighs> if you like this, like dusty look, and then that shot behind his head with those trees. I don't know what it is, but this looks so good on this camera. It just it made me sad when we would go inside, because outside looked so amazing. So this whole bit here is like, he saw something, something wasn't right, and he went out there, and we didn't see it. And then right here, as he turns and goes away, obviously we can't do it, but behind that tree, the transmission was supposed to come out. Um, and kind of walk, but it just looks so hokey. And then the transmission was supposed to be right here. But um, I like, if I would have done this different, I think the only thing I would have done different is not cut to what his POV is on any of these shots. I would have just had the voice be off in the background somewhere. Because his face could sell freaking ice to Eskimos, dude. And that just looked really cool backwards. And this song right here, this is um, Yvonne DiCarlo um, on the Creeperson's Final Chapter EP. <clears throat> now, this is something that would happen quite regularly over at Nicole's. A bunch of motherfuckers would get together and party in the back. <laughs> but this was the first bit of shooting we did. Um, this was on the first night. Um, we even shot the Victor stuff this night, too. Oh, and so here's some Hunchback from Notre Dame stuff to kind of give you the feel of what he's relating this to. Like, oh, a bunch of people outside partying, a bunch of assholes. Patooey on your face. Ha, ha, ha. But anyway... 
So this was really hard to shoot because um, as this night was going on, um, these people who were hanging out um, were actually drinking and having a good time, and they were becoming harder and harder to um, <laughs> to to deal with. I guess is the best way to put it. Um, like direction wasn't being taken. And that right there is just a shot of the fire without the lens on the camera, which is an open hole. But, um, and everyone is backwards again because we were going with the whole thing where Victor can't understand anybody. And um, there's Kelly and there's Josh. Um, blah, blah. I love it. That's so cool. Um, so that's him kind of falling for her, and he's like, oh, yeah, so doing the whole Nosferatu kind of thing. Um, so, again, that's why all of those um, scenes were put in here. And we did, like, a blue tint on everything just because when he does see the transmission inside his um, apartment or his little room here, um, it has that kind of blue tint to it. And he did really good. There's a lot of actors out here in Hollywood land that um, get really upset if they don't have anybody they could work off of. And um, James seemed to be able to pull it off quite nicely um, having all of his conversations with a rat. And there's a little Venus flytrap. And you know what? I got uh, some Venus flytraps um, a couple years ago. Um, and they are quite fun to play with. There was a big um, subplot. Or not really subplot, but just like a... Yeah, I guess you would consider it a subplot. Where you realize that the reason why she's allowing him to live in her house is because she was friends with um, his family. And so she was doing it as kind of like a favor to his family kind of thing. Um, and now we're going to find out why he was so scared of letting her see what he had up in his room. But um, another thing that came up that was kind of a, not necessarily a super hard thing to do, but one of the gags in this is that um, whenever he sees, when he talks to Mary, who he names affectionately, um, he, uh, he sees her as a silent movie, and when she talks to him, it comes up in a title card. And looking back, I wish I would have matched the color of this to that, um, where all the the scenes from the old movies are like that kind of blue color. It would have been nice uh, to do that, but I didn't think at the time that people would understand it. I think the sepia tone gives people the impression right away that um, it's an old silent movie. And I thought if we did the blue, it might not come across as well. And that was kind of a fuck up on my part. And there she is. And um, a lot of uh, this whole... Um, bit with the marker. I don't want to kind of out myself as a lunatic here or anything like that. But um, and let me tell you what, um, Nikki, who plays his mother right there, um, 
was not too happy that I played her voice in slow motion. Um, that was actually a big fight after she saw a version of the movie, um, after she saw a cut of it. Um, she was a little pissed. <laughs> And again, like that whole bit right there, um, I one of the first people I showed the completed film to was someone who I respect a ton. This guy named Jr. who um, owned California Video in Cyprus, where I ended up moving to right after this. I grew up there too. And um, he's the one who rented me movies and all this stuff, and I would go in there and we would talk shop about films all the fucking time. And um, when I showed him this, I didn't really think much of it, but this was kind of the first time where um, I realized, like, dialogue I write could affect people and kind of hurt them, I guess. But that line where um, she was calling him a faggot and he's like, I don't pack fudge and all this other stuff. Um, he found that really offensive. And um, I felt really bad that he did. Because, I, again, I wasn't trying to offend anybody. I was trying to show that his mom was overbearing and just kind of nuts with him and that he was a big old pussy about his mom. Now what you don't see here is that for some reason this whole time when Frank's sitting on top of that book, he just kept shitting all over the top of the book and all down the <coughs> the uh, the paperback uh, dust jacket. And um, it was uh, kind of a mess. And when I found that book, again, after I moved, I opened it up and there was still rat shit stuck in between a couple of the pages and I kind of got grossed out. So that's just gross. Because um, we shot this in November of 2006. We finished the edit at the end of January of 2007 and then like a couple days after that I moved back to Orange County. So, um, that's how that all worked out. <sighs> Let me see if we have any questions here. Is this going to work now? Nope, that will not work, apparently. So let me go over here and see if there's any comment questions on here. Um... Okay, so, yeah. Um, now, one of the reasons why this worked out here, where Mary, or not Mary, but Shelly comes out to talk to Victor on the porch, um, even though it's backwards, it works, because for the most part, he repeats everything she says. So that kind of worked out well. So she's obviously looking for her friend that no one's been able to find. And she's like, Josh? <laughs> oh, Nicole, you were awesome. So there's that. Um, if you see right there in front of the rat cage, that board right there is part of the um, dolly for the um, that one shot we did. We wanted to set it up more, but we just felt like we were kind of running low on time, and we didn't actually think we were going to be able to shoot the whole movie um, in this time. And personally, even though that looks a little soft right there, I really like how he's blue, but the ceiling 
the, is just the warm wood color. And this right here is right out of Tales of Tomorrow with Lon Chaney playing the uh, monster. So this is actually really good. If you've, if you've never seen it, the Tales of Tomorrow Frankenstein episode, it's a cool little rendition of the classic. And he actually looks a lot like the... more like the book, like how uh, Robert De Niro looked in... Um, uh, Mary Shelley's Frankenstein that I think Copeland did that if I'm not mistaken so a lot of this too I got some heat because there is a lot of clips in the movie but that's kind of the whole point like this is how Victor sees the world and from a lazy filmmaker standpoint which you will see when you watch my second feature, OC Babes and the Slasher Zombie Town, when I was doing this with the footage, I wasn't doing it to be lazy, whereas in um, OC Babes, it wasn't necessarily out of laziness, but out of necessity because we didn't have any shots of zombies, which is why we used a bunch of stuff from Night of the Living Dead. So um, that's how that goes. And this whole bit with drawing on the stitches, this was kind of um, my idea here. Uh, oh, yes, there is a question there. Hang on one second here. Let me answer this. What is that noise? I don't know if you guys could hear that, but it's very annoying. Um, so, Char asks, the mannequin on the cover of Frankenstein, is that the same one that was used in your other film, He? And yes, it was. And um, how that came to be used, basically, is in um, the movie He, there were um, a couple people who were in the barbecue scene, um, Brian Coyne and Paul Hoff. Um, Paul Hoff was directing, putting together this movie he was doing called The Human Race that I think is out now, actually. Um, and Brian was a producer on that. And right across the street, kind of from where I lived, there was a Mervyn's uh, department store kind of place and they were going out of business or whatever, and they were selling off all of the shit inside. So Paul and Brian stopped there on their way to my house where we were shooting he and picked up some mannequins uh, for use in the human race to kind of make explode for practical effects when people explode. So um, my buddy Tom Devlin who actually um, did the special effects on, like, Orgy of Blood and Cage Lesbos. Um, he actually was the one who did the poster for Frankenstein. And um, he was also doing special effects on Human Race. So he had that um, mannequin... I love that Misfits poster, The Undertaker and His Pals. That's so cool. Anyway, um, so Tom took a picture of that because he was doing that and blew up. He, he was blowing up those mannequins on Human Race, and I'm in Human Race for a little bit, actually. Um, but the rat on the mannequin shoulder is not Frankenstein, but it's from another movie that Tom was working on, um, uh, Rat Scratch Fever by uh, Jeff Leroy. So that cover has like connections to a ton of different movies there. So um, that was kind of cool. And now he's having his conversation with um, Kelly Kingsbury, who's playing Mary. Um, and I don't know if you've seen this as a trope in a lot of my work, but coffee is very important. And, um, 
eggs kind of freak me out a little bit. So um, a lot of people might not see how the eggs are necessarily scary in this, but watching him eat eggs is like horrifying. It's like uh, nails on chalkboard to me, you know. Um, and then this just goes with this whole thing where the whole point of this on on the cover, you know, it says uh, summon make monsters. Victor just wanted a friend. Okay. He makes his own friend, and that friend even rejects him, just like kind of in a backwards way. Frankenstein, the professor, the scientist, rejects the monster, and then in Bride of Frankenstein, the bride rejects the monster. So it's just nothing ever works out the way you want and one person pointed this out, and this was me just trying to be really weird here. So she's smoking a cigarette now, and then she's going to drop her cigarette in the coffee. And when she does that, um, it's not sepia-toned anymore to make it look like there might be some legitimacy to this madness that Victor's going through, obviously. I mean, because for the most part, I'm pretty sure people understand as they watch this that Victor's batshit crazy at this point. Um, I mean, just someone who eats that much eggs, doesn't ever go to the bathroom, doesn't ever take a shower, wears the same clothes, but somehow manages to brush his teeth and eat eggs all the time. Um... Pretty sure people think he's fucking nuts at that point. I can't remember. I think it even it probably says in the movie. It might have been me, but I don't remember who did the wound on her head and all the blood splatter on her face. But um, that really came out well for us. So she just puts the cigarette in the cup and then walks off, and now we'll see the cup after she leaves. And it'll be in color. So, um, I don't know who did the makeup. Because the blood looks really, really cool. Now, this bit right here where she gets out of the shower, and um, there's like a little screen inside the screen, this was actually um, really kind of tricky to do. This is probably what took us the longest in post to make this work because we had to keep freezing um, Victor because it would take her twice as long to do this because she says the lines and then we put up the title card. So this whole scene, he's sitting there in real time doing all this stuff and he will start responding to her, but we had to keep freezing him in order to make it where he wasn't jumping on our lines and everything like that. But that's probably one of my favorite gags on here. And for some reason, if you notice there, every once in a while, some of the title card sequences with the um, dialogue written in it doesn't go all the way to the edges of the frame. And I have no idea why that is. Um, that shows you how technically sound I am as an editor. But for some reason, those didn't all hold up. And um, Kelly actually did really well delivering her lines. And she didn't even know she was going to do the movie until I think the night we were at the... Um, the bonfire, which was the first thing we shot. I didn't know if she was going to be... We had someone else who was contractually obligated to be in this Cthulhu movie that was also being shot up in um, Eugene around the same time, but it hadn't started shooting yet, and it was supposed to shoot like a year before, but the guy who directed the movie said... He made everyone sign contracts saying that they couldn't work on anything else until this movie was done. 
So um, she was supposed to do it, and then, like, I can't remember her name. I feel horrible. But um, the day before, um, because most of this stuff was shot on Saturday. Yeah. Um, Nikki was very mad about the snorts. But um, she couldn't do it, and so Kelly was at the bonfire, and... um, we got a couple cool shots of him looking down at her and her sitting there. And so we kind of just changed the whole thing up to have Kelly do it. And so we gave her the script and I didn't even think that she had that much dialogue. Um, and then as we started shooting everything and now he was just unmasked by Shelly and Shelly saw the body there. And when the mask comes off of the phantom, um, that was supposed to be, Victor seeing her is how this whole thing worked and that shovel falling that worked out great we just got this shot off this was all one take because that we were losing sunlight um, and I think that was because Nicole had to split for a little bit and um, we were waiting and I think if you play that part back where she's running across the front porch there's a couple people sitting there who shouldn't be sitting there um, now this house that, um, he's walking up to that's on the same property, um, is actually where his room was supposed to be, but I actually liked the whole stairway thing that we ended up doing. I think that worked out a lot better. Um, what you can't see there was her looking out the window and we tried to lighten this up a bunch and it just didn't work out very well. Um... And then this is where he gets her, grabs her by the heart. So, and there were like people in the living room partying and watching TV. Good times. But anyway, <clears throat> so um, long story too long now. Kelly had no idea she was going to do this, and she came in and knew all of her parts and ended up working out well. This is probably the best bit in the movie. If you suffer from epilepsy, this might suck. Um, but all we did is I was holding the light and I was just shaking it and Aaron was running the camera. And we just told him to try to get away um, without really going anywhere. And he did great. <laughs> So we just were following him around the rim. And he was pretty on script this whole time for the most part, which was amazing. Because again, like, <clears throat> James, I believe, uh, was a pretty schooled actor. Um, he's... I think the only person in the movie that had acting experience before this, but it was years he had been out of the game kind of thing, and he fell right into it um, really easily. And this whole bit in red, this is like what happened after that party. And that was another thing, too, that I didn't know if we should do or not. We were, I was going to make her voice backwards there, but because it's kind of a flashback showing the viewers what happened. We left her voice normal. But um, after this, I think he did another project with Aaron. Aaron ended up um, getting a job up at... Oh, am I going to fuck the name of it up? I think I am. There's a big studio out in Eugene. Um, it's not Charter. Sounds like that. Starts with a C. He got a job working out there. And uh, he made some movie about a card player or something like that. And um, James did that. But I don't think he uh, actually... I don't know what happened with that. I never saw it. And look at just what a nut job he is, dude. Oh my gosh. He was batshit crazy in this right there. Funny enough, his hair almost looks like mine, so that's kind of 
bizarre, maybe. Maybe I'm saying I look like a crazy hair farmer. And this is right what happened right when Nicole walked in. At that one part where he freaked out. So, um, that's how all that worked. But, um... The music for this that my band did was probably recorded about four months beforehand. So I knew what songs I was going to put in this, but I didn't know what where they were going to go. So that ended up working out okay. But yeah, this kind of goes on for a bit, but I really like it. Um, in fact, if a lot of people also gave me shit because this movie's barely an hour, and the only reason why... I mean, the script for this, I think, was like 20 pages, but um, the reason why we considered it a feature is because when we submitted it to IMDb, IMDb specifications were... Um, if it's over 45 minutes, it's a feature. So that's how this became a feature. Now this bit right here, there was actually a bathtub in this field. And apparently the reason why you would find bathtubs in fields, I guess, is because that's where you would feed horses or something like that. Originally what was supposed to happen pretty close to where um, Nicole lived. I don't know if Nicole still lives there or not. But where we shot this, there's this lake, and we were going to have him walk her into a lake and, like, let her go under the water kind of thing. And um, when I saw the bathtub in the field, for some reason I thought that was a way better thing and probably time-wise worked out because it was right next to where um, we were at. In fact, I don't think that was her property. I think that was the neighboring property. Um, it was raining here, and Aaron was freaking out about getting his camera wet. Um, but the other thing about this is, Kelly being a good sport, there are hobo spiders in Eugene, Oregon. And without any thought, she's just in her underwear, she went and sat in a skanky, dirty, brown watered covered bathtub. And... Um, let us cover her up with fucking trashy ass leaves. She was just a total trooper. And this bit right here, I think the yellow raincoat adds to it so much, but um, this is where he just, he's kind of hit rock bottom now. He, once uh, Shelly found out what he had done, it kind of broke him. And, um, brought some of this to reality, and it's kind of like the virgin spring where when he finds his daughter, he goes off and leans up against a tree to have his moment with God away from the audience. And this was kind of that same idea that um, he's going to go have his moment of crying out to God um, or whatever, whoever he prays to. Um and he was just going for it. And that's really the only time um, we kind of leave him. There's times when we're already kind of far away and he approaches us. But this is the first time where he was allowed to just leave us and go be by himself. And yes, those trees look like pubic hair. I'm sorry, I had to say it. And um, this is Monster from Long Ago, which means The Calling was the song um, during the fight scene where he's like breaking her head open and all that other stuff. Um, let me see here. Anyone in the cast? I'm going to find out some stuff. Frankenstein was himself because we ended up naming him Frankenstein. Oh, and Aaron was also the guy phone sex dude. That worked out pretty good. 
Um, that was so funny. I loved going to Aaron's place and working on this movie. He lived right across the street from this little shop, and we would just hang out all day working on it. And then we would take breaks and go watch weird Japanese movies in his living room or um, all sorts of other shit. So the visual effects. Oh, talent agency. Look at that. Um, I still don't know how the special effects were done. Maybe I missed that. But um, And Nikki did do the piano and organ theme. That was actually some music we were trying to put together for a Creeperson song. And it just wasn't... It was just kind of slow. And it just seemed... I don't know. It, and it was we were putting it together around the same time we were about to film this. So um, we went ahead and did that. And Matt Feltis at Central Node kind of helped. Uh, he did the recording of the music on there, so that worked out pretty well. Um, now what I'm going to do is, if you have the DVD, um, I'm going to go ahead and play the little making of. It's like 20 minutes long. Um, you don't have to sit through this if you don't want to. But um, it would be good for me to kind of get some more little feedback because from what I know, the only thing I remember from the making of of this is that um, there is a what is it? What do you call it? Um, a discussion about the Smiths and a discussion about um, Richard Grieco. So um, I'm going to watch this too. So if you have the DVD, I just hit play on it if you want to follow up with that. Oh, a test of our stupidity. That's right, because there were a bunch of people who have done... Um, I kind of fed him that one. Oh, look at no beard me. But, um, yeah, a bunch of people use that as... Uh, what do you call it? Um, oh, a test of our stupidity. Yeah, you're an idiot kind of shit. So um, I kind of gave him that one to make fun of me and give the movie a bad review. So, And I missed that fur coat. I have it, but I never wear it. It just doesn't get cold enough down here to put that on. Sorry, everybody. I know some of you are in the snowy, snowy regions of the world. But... Um, so my apologies there. Let me see here. And this is me. If you're watching this, I'm pulling up to uh, Nicole's place right now. Pretty awesome. And there's Josh breaking wood for the bonfire. Um, who is that? Well, that's Cordell. Cordell, um, one of the funny things about... Ooh, look at that wipe. Oh, look at my bangs. My bangs are huge. Crazy. Um, one of the things about Cordell that was hysterical was he helped out on all the shorts I did and this movie. And, um, and all the footage of all these movies, we used to play this game called Where's Cordell? Because he would always show up in the background of shots. Every goddamn thing. And so it was just the big um, funny joke. And we would... Uh, oh, there are some tacky-ass wipes in this. This is horrible. I must have edited this. Um, Now, around this time, too, I was doing um, a show on MySpace. Wow. I'm dating myself here. A show on MySpace called Creepsville TV where um, I would interview um, the bands on the label and the actors in the movies and all this stuff. And I don't think I ended up using some of that stuff in this. Um, but there were a lot of um, little bits... 
yeah. that um, <laughs> from the behind the scenes that ended up on that. So if I ever find that footage, I'll put that together too. But um, oh, I laugh exactly the same back then. So yeah, it was super fucking early. I think this was. Um, I don't remember if this was the first day or not. Should have been the first day, but it could have been the second. Let's see here. I'm following questions on three different sites like an idiot. Um, oh, yeah. Trying to wait for the beaded curtain to stop moving um, was probably one of the biggest fucking annoyances of this movie because we would shoot or someone would bump into it and it would start swaying and I would want them obviously not moving because no one had gone through it yet. Um, so there was that. The guy in the green hoodie is uh, A.L. Smith, our um, cinematographer slash editor for the movie. Aw, oh, Nicole. <laughs> that queen shirt Nicole had on was awesome. It had furry um, faces on them. I really enjoyed that. Um, let's see. Oh, right there. He says it. He's Josh. He played the guy that fucked her by the fire. That scene we took out. Oh, my God. That's right. There is a cut scene in this movie. The love scene. Ooh. Why did that get cut out? I don't remember. Dodge the bullet, Nicole. Good job. Yeah, there was like a some sort of scene in there. I wonder where that is. I won't release it, I guess, but um, apparently I totally forgot that we did that. So weird. Like, you go, you go back to something years later and you remember stuff that you had completely forgotten about. But um, now for those of you who, uh, at the beginning of this I was talking about, there was a distributor um, that was interested. I'm so grateful. <laughs> oh, that is great. Oh, I didn't know I could do that. I could currently answer questions. That's awesome. Look at that fun stuff. Um, so, yeah, that was awesome. Oh, Nicole, good times. And now it's gone, so I don't know where it went. <laughs> oh. Um, Google Hangouts is a very weird beast, but let's not talk about that. Anyway, so um, the reason, and if you guys notice, I'm wearing pajama pants and a Michael Graves shirt with my big fur coat. I wore pajama pants every day if I could, and I had all these different kinds of, like, horror-related pajama pants. I would go to Target every September, right when they would start putting out the Halloween stuff, and just go on a spree. And um, that was probably the most comfortable year of my life, wearing pajama pants every day in public. Go to clubs in pajama pants, didn't give a shit. That's how I rolled. Um... But uh, the the distributor, me and the distributor ended up having a falling out over this whole project because there was um, supposedly a dollar amount that I was supposed to get when I completed the film and turned it into them. And then they didn't want to pay, but they still wanted the movie and they wanted to put the movie out. And there was a bunch of bullshit that went on with it and so I just I kept the movie from them and um, kind of held on to it for a couple years uh, before I finally put it out with MVD. But um, 
I ended up going back to the company a little while later. They wanted to, and I'm not going to say what, but they wanted to work out a deal on another one of my films. And so I allowed that deal to go through. And um, basically because the movie I gave them I thought was kind of a piece of shit. And I didn't think I'd get any money for it anyway. And um, they still have not paid me a dime for that film. And it has been, what, three, four years? No. Five or six years. And they still haven't paid me. And I get statements from them now saying that they owe me money, but they just haven't paid me. And I just don't think they're going to. So if you guys are playing Slug Bug, there's a Slug Bug Gray in the background there. But um, that's me, I think, talking about my um, fascination as a kid with Richard Grieco's Five O'Clock Shadow. Could be wrong. But, you know, what What good is a behind-the-scenes uh, making of if you're not talking about shit that has nothing to do with the film? So that's how that goes. Um, but I really miss Oregon a lot, that weather, man. It's just, you can't beat it, and it's so beautiful to shoot in. I recommend everyone who ever has wanted to make a movie to go to Oregon in the fall and shoot something. You will be so happy with what you get. Because, um, it's just, it's amazing. Oh, we're talking about Velvet Goldmine now on here. That was a fun movie. I think we're talking about penises. It's so weird um, going back to seeing this because I hadn't done anything yet. It's like a whole different me. And the way things work out, I'm leaning more towards now. I just, um, another thing that just happened today, oh, actually two things that actually kind of relate to this. Um, I published um, Bloodlust Romance. Oh, and I miss Oregon. Thank you, Nicole. <clears throat> Maybe I'll head up there one of these days soon. I miss it. But, um, but uh, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, so Bloodlust Romance, the reason why I went to Oregon in the first place. Um, we got that all fixed up and all that other shit, and I finally got it put up today. And it's up on Barnes & Noble now. The book is, anyway. And it's going to be up on Amazon soon. Apple rejected it due to content because there it gets a little rapey in some parts. But... Um, it's just weird that today was the day that that got, went live because that's the whole reason why I went up there. Um, another thing is today I watched the, um, the rough cut of, it's not really a sequel to this at all, but I did a movie last year called Frankenstein's Bride and I watched uh, the rough cut of that today. <clears throat> And um, it needs some work, but it's just, it's neat to see kind of where you go. I, you know, I did this in 2006, and now it's 2014, and it's just, it's bizarre, man. It's a trip. Let me see if there's anything else in here that's worth talking about. Because one of the first reviews we got on Frankenstein was um, what a cockhead I am that the making of is just me in the backyard chain smoking, talking um, about myself and stuff like that. And and it looks like that's all I'm doing. <laughs> But it's funny that instead of reviewing the movie, they ended up reviewing the shitty documentary that came with it. But, um... Oh, wow, I just keep talking. I'm, I'm jumping ahead 15 seconds at a time. Jesus. 
Jesus Christ. I had nice long bangs. I give myself that. And I fill out a fur coat pretty nicely. But um but yeah. Um, but yeah, so, uh, sorry guys, I'm trying to hear this and be able to talk without it cutting off. And we had to edit some stuff out of this because, um, when we recorded this behind the scenes thing, we had a deal with, um, the distributor. And then by the time this movie was done, um, our deal was no longer solid. So we had to cut out um, the bits in there where we we're actually talking about the distributor and all that fun stuff. But um, I'm trying to think if Frankenstein made any appearances in anything else other than. Um, but yeah, we had a big conversation about um, the Smiths and Ryan Adams. Um, so if you're interested in that, you could definitely check that out. Um, but while this is going and I'm trying to figure out everything else here, um, a while ago I was talking about writing a book on filmmaking. And since I'm going to put this up on Creepers and Casts anyway, um, oh, and that's gross. The Frankenstein is taking a shit and... James thought it would be funny to put it up to the camera. So that is just fucking foul. So I apologize to all of you who had to witness that. My bad. But anyway. Um, <clears throat> so I am going to write that book, um, but it's not going to be... Because um, when I first put it out, there was like over 50 chapters when I was plotting it. And it just it would take me like two years to write it, so I'm just gonna write it in parts, and um, put the parts up, um, and maybe I'll even put the put the books together like um, almost like courses. Like this is on fundraising, this is on script writing, this is on blah 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 blah. So I might do that. <clears throat> so, um, but that is something that's gonna get done here. Uh, pretty soon. And the other thing I wanted to say about it is, again, this is not how to make a movie, and even when you watch Frankenstein in the making of, this is not how to do it, but this is how I did it. I don't recommend anyone doing it this way, because it'll drive you crazy, and it will destroy all your friendships and relationships. But um, this was how I did it. So if you want to know how I did it, this is how. But um, I... Don't recommend it, necessarily. Um, but let me see, is there anything else in here other than us just talking shit? Us in the dark trying to figure out how to put stuff together. I think there's actually a shot of us shooting him on the couch, yeah. So you can see how I move a light or how I hold it. Also very interesting. Um, so this is definitely riveting stuff here. Um, as you can see, this is my first film and my first behind-the-scenes feature. So it's not the um, the full tilt boogie that you were probably hoping it would be. Um, so if you haven't already subscribed to Creepers and Cast on iTunes, go ahead and do that. This is a great shot, too, um, on this behind-the-scenes thing where we're waiting for cars to not drive by the street so we could shoot the fucking thing. And Aaron has the XL2, and I'm holding the damn microphone. And I'm pretty sure Cordell is laying on a chair somewhere. Because um, Cordell got tired of running boom, so I had to do it. So what happens when you're not paying your crew. If they want to take a break, there's nothing really you could do about it. And if I recall correctly, he took a long ass break and these cars just kept coming and it's so funny because the street is not a street that has a lot of traffic. 
and just cars just kept coming and kept coming and kept coming. Awesome. So funny. Um, let me see here. What else we got? Oh, Cordell's actually shooting this. That's why he's not around. So if you're watching this, Cordell, I'm sorry. And I was in the shot. That's something else that I tend to do. A lot of times I end up on the wrong end of the camera on accident. Oh, that was another shot that we didn't end up putting in there. The interior of the house where she's questioning what he's doing and what he's talking about. I can't believe that there's stuff that we cut out of this movie. Oh my gosh, and then there's the video of Nicole asleep on the bed and I'm rubbing the monkey on her mouth. Um, that And there's Gizmo. Oh my gosh. Um, that's when we were playing up in Portland probably about a month before making Frankenstein. And that's Gizmo's toy monkey. Um, and I'm just rubbing it on her mouth and she is not at all bothered by it. Nicole can sleep through a goddamn end of the world, apparently. <laughs> That's some good shit. I'm enjoying this greatly. So yeah. So anyway, folks, that mess was the making of as well. So I just want to thank you guys all for hanging out and for the few questions we had. Thank you. Um, and hopefully you will uh, subscribe to us on um, Creepers and Cast, and you can hear the audio of this and many other things. So until then, everybody, take care and keep creepy. Bye.